Hey everybody, Fred Medic here, and it's another segment of what's in the box. I've got a box, I've got a dull blade, so here we go. Ooh, look at that. Clean cut right there. All right, they got the old classic, um, they got the classic uh, wrapping here. I don't like that. This is, this is a, a very traditional style of wrapping. Let's see if we have any cards, PR thingies. No, nope. just something in the box. And it, the material is taped. Oh, okay. The cabinet. The cabinet barrel proof. Now, this is uh, a blend of straight whiskeys, an American rye and bourbon, bottled in 2022. This looks like it's from, oh, so it is. It's from Proof and Wood. I was about to say it was from, it looks like the bottling style of uh, Dave Schmier, who was the original founder of, um, of Redemption. He has went on to start a brand called Proof and Wood, um, and he is doing a lot of blending. He also has a brand out there called The Senator, not to be confused with the Kentucky Senator. Uh, those are very different brands. So uh, here is some details. Like, I love this. There's a lot of details on the label, so I don't need a press release to dig into, and it'll be pretty hard for me to screw this one up in terms of what it is. So this is the distillation and date and mash bill of the composite. A 2013 rye, aged nine years in new charred oak. A 2013 rye, aged nine years in new charred oak. So uh, two different uh, ryes there. Um, and a 2014 rye, aged at least seven years in new charred oak. A 2015 rye, aged in at least six years in new charred oak. And a 2017 bourbon, aged, aged in at least four years in new charred oak says it's all distilled in Indiana. So all of this is to be presumed from MGP. Here are the mash bills for the rye, 95% rye, 5% barley for the bourbon, 75% corn, 21% rye, 4% barley. Now, a label like this, it's very exciting. It's it, you know fully transparent. Uh, but if you're going to go to the distance of, of a, putting these on here, why don't we go ahead and give the percentages of what, what's in here? So I'm going to see if I cannot get the percentages of these uh, of this composite of each one of these ryes and bourbon and uh, put it in the description and or the comment section. So wish me luck on that. Now, we have the dreaded, absolutely dreaded, hated wax at least this has a little tab that i can get to but often these tabs break oh boy yeah this is this is going to require the old trusty blade so these uh i hate hate wax on bourbon Absolutely hate it. All right, so let's see if that. Yeah, there we go. Man, completely unnecessary to have that. All right, there we go. <sighs> okay, this is the cabinet a blend of bourbon and rye. You heard me talk about the mash bill. Uh, in the past, I've talked about how blend of straights are ba basically the future of this uh, of this world, and I'm gonna stay with that. It's uh, the blend the blend of straights is is like what you're gonna see a lot more companies do because they can't get access to that really good 12 year old Kentucky bourbon anymore. So they have access to so a handful of good rye barrels, a handful of good bourbon barrels, but to get the volume, they need they need something in bulk, uh, and they will not be able to get that with eight to twelve year old bourbon. So here we go. Huh. Hmm. Huh. 
kind of reminds me of um, kind of reminds me of some of those like um, state fair cinnamon cinnamon nut stands like where they're selling those like hot uh, hot pecans that are like drenched in um, in cinnamon it smells a lot like that so cinnamon forward nose with a hint of nuttiness On the palate, it tastes a little bit like a custard, like a vanilla custard. Um, there's a, a lot of cinnamon, a lot of cinnamon in that back of the palate. Definitely a, definitely a cinnamon forward profile here. Like a custard, a tapioca pudding. Following that. Um, and then some like hints of, of, of oak and th th this is a nice this is a nice whiskey I'll put the price in the in the description because I don't know if there's not any information on that in the in the box because we just know what's in the box but I, um, I, I I don't know I don't know how I feel about the finish the finish is kind of medium maybe a hint of vanilla there but overall, it's a it's a decent pour. Um, it's definitely in a blossoming category in the blending of of rye and bourbon together. I just don't know. It's not in the league of high west blue rye. Let's put it that way. Oh come on, we got another box here. We're we're here filming what's in the box. There you go. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Thank you. So that's what happens here. Uh, I get boxes all the time from all over the place we'll go ahead and um you know should we do that one now or do it uh after this let's do, it now. do it now let's do it now let's do it now uh so to wrap up the cabinet here uh i think that this is definitely in a blossoming category uh it is um it, it's not the, it's not going to be the leader in the blends of a bourbon and rye but uh, it'll do in a pinch. Uh, but that's going to do it for uh, this tasting. I got a new box here. I'm going to crack that open. Well, don't want you to see the address. I don't want to see who it's from. Got to get another glass. Got those stowed away back here. <laughs> All right. Got the blade. Damn, this thing's dull. All right. Oh! A little Penelope here, a Tokai cask finish. All right. No information. There's something stuck here in the bottom. Well, I guess there's not something stuck in the bottom. Uh, so, this is their Cooper series. Uh, this is for a Tokai finish. Uh, it's spelled Tokaji, but it's Tokai. Uh, this is a straight rye finish in Tokai wine cask. So back in my wine riding days, uh, I spent a good deal of time in Slovenia. And in Slovenia, they uh, made Tokai there, and they actually took Hungary to uh, the world courts over who was the uh, the birth, who who was the originator of the uh, Tokai wine grape, which is basically um, it's a it's a lovely it's a lovely like lovely wine. It's a sweet wine, it's a white wine, and I, I think it's fantastic. Hungary would end up winning that that world uh, court case but in the used barrel market uh, there have actually been a lot of um, like French brandy casts or or rather uh, French uh, fortified uh, fortified wine get mixed up as Tokai barrels so you know you see all this Tokai stuff out there but there was a major mix-up amongst the brokers so even though they were certified Tokai, 
uh, there's a lot of barrels on the market that are not legitimately Tokai, and the people who are bottling it, they don't know. But um, it's a it's a minor problem that only people who like Tokai care about. So here we go. This is the Penelope uh, Tokai finish, straight rye. Let's see if there's anything else on here. I don't have an age. This is batch one, non-chill filtered. And it is six, oh, there we go. Six years old, 107 proof. Let's go. I did a charity, um, uh, uh, Penelope and I um, joined forces to raise some money for the flood victims. Uh, one of the, as you all know, like I was a part of the Kentucky Bourbon Benefit and um, Penelope donated a barrel of the rose cask, the rose cask finish, and I said I would be a part of it. And I think that thing sold for like $25,000, $20,000, so right on Penelope. Woo! It's astringent out of the nose, man. Yeah, that is smelling hot. little sweetness there kind of like a, a blackberry but boy it I get a lot of alcohol this is this come this smells way hotter than a 107 proofer but damn does it taste good Whew. this is uh, this is why we why why I like the finishing category I, I have issues with the rules. I'm, I've always been uh, vocal about that, but I really like what the flavors bring. Um, there's a, so much blackberry in this in this uh, flavor profile. Like, imagine like blackberry on a on a rye muffin or a, a rye toast. Um, the rye is very pronounced here. Like, I I taste the rye. The rye is, it's not coming off as herbly. It's not coming off as spicy. It's tasting like rye bread, uh, frankly with like blackberry jam and I dig that I think it's fantastic the finish is very compelling it's got like a honey butter on the finish so with um, with some spice and then the little herbal note comes back in so there's a lot going on on the finish that was not on the on the taste so this is an excellent uh, Tokai release um, the blackberry notes is uh, just mwah, chef's kiss. Love that. But that's going to do it for this episode of What's in the Box. As you got to see, I got a box here while in the middle of What's in the Box. The irony, right? But in all, I get about, I would say, on an average week, I get 10 packages. Um, on a busy week, I'll get 100, and that is no joke. And it'll be like, a lot of them will be like small ones. Uh, sometimes I'll get like a kit of like 30 samples in it. Um, you know, when I'm in tasting season or tasting competition season, which is in the springtime, uh, I'll, get, I'll get 600 samples to the office um, in that time frame. So it is not unusual to have a box show up while I'm in the middle of doing what's in the box. But this is the first time I think I've actually recorded it. Yeah, so... Thanks for tuning in. If you would like to click that subscribe button, hit the like button, and tell a friend. It goes a long way with sharing the bourbon story. Uh, also, make sure you check out my books like Whiskey Women, Bourbon Rise Fall, Rebirth of American Whiskey, Bourbon Curious, uh, Rum Curious, Mead, and sign up for my free drinks newsletter at fredminnick.com. Cheers, y'all.